In this module, we are going to discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of the BCG mechanism. Uh, so the first thing that we have already noticed that uh, BCG mechanism is dominant strategy incentive compatible, which is a very desirable property that it uh, gives very little cognitive load on the bidder. So uh, if a mechanism is not truthful, then um, the agents have to really find out what is the most optimal way of lying. And that gives a larger amount of co cognitive load. While if the mechanism is truthful, then uh, it is very simple. Whatever is your uh, true value, you just reveal it. And that requires no sort of computation on the uh, on the agents or the players. End. So that is a, a very um, uh, desirable property of a mechanism. And VCG satisfies that. We have also seen that it, this mechanism is has no deficit. So... Um, and also it does not provide any subsidy to any agents uh, if the items are goods then uh, we can be sure that the mechanism designer is always going to get some non-negative amount of money out of it uh, but um, it will never run into losses similarly the third uh, desirable property is that it never charges to a losing agent an agent uh, in the context of uh, allocation of uh, goods um, we have seen that if uh, uh, if you do not give any object to a specific agent, uh, so uh, if a, a agent's uh, allocation is is empty, then it, uh, the payment uh, under this PCG mechanism will also be zero. So it never charges that. And we have also seen under fairly general conditions, uh, the individual rationality property is also satisfied. So by participating uh, in this mechanism, uh, nobody is going to lose their utility, so their utilities will, will always be non-negative uh, by participation. But like any other mechanism, VCG is not without any uh, disadvantages. So there are few undesirable properties uh, which comes uh, as, uh, as, a, as a side product of the VCG mechanism is something that we are going to discuss here today. So um, the first property, uh, the first uh, limitation we would say that uh, is that is its problem with privacy and transparency. So notice that whenever uh, there are uh, this kind of truthful mechanisms and this is not only related to a VCG, it is true for ev every truthful mechanism. So any truthful mechanism reveals the valuations or types uh, in the truthful way. And if there are you know, multiple organizations or uh, players who are competing with each other, so for instance, there are two telecommunication companies who are trying to get uh, some spectrum, uh, the, the spectrum in the same area. And uh, if this mechanism is run, then they will have to reveal their valuations truthfully because that is guaranteed by this mechanism. Uh, but they really don't want uh, the competing company to know what their true value for that spectrum is. So this is uh, one issue with privacy that uh, uh, all the uh, truthful mechanisms uh, encounter, uh, including VCG. The second property is with transparency. So if you imagine that uh, the auctioneer is not, uh, not so trustable, so we have always assumed that the mechanism designer is kind of a benevolent uh, kind of an um, entity. So it does not have any um, uh, reason to, to do any kind of malicious activity. But if that is not true, so uh, imagine a situation where let's say we are running a second prize auction, we are uh, uh, selling a single indivisible object uh, and uh, the highest bidder is way above the, the second highest bidder. So maybe the highest bidder is uh, having a value for that object as uh, 1000 rupees and the, uh, the second highest bidder is maybe 1 or 2 rupees. So even though the uh, auction, the item uh, for that auction has been given to the highest bidder, it is only charging it, let's say, 2 rupees. So this is a serious uh, loss in revenue for the auctioneer. So a malicious au auctioneer might like to introduce some fake bidders. Once it re uh, realizes that uh, the, uh, the revenue earned by this uh, second price auction or VCG mechanism is going to be very low, then it can introduce some other fake bidders whose valuation is very close to, let's say, 1000 rupees. So in that case, it is earning a lot of money, but it, it is certainly uh, a problem uh, with transparency of the VCG mechanism. So this mechanism essentially leaves that option of, uh, of such malicious activity. The second property um, 
the second limitation of VCG is that uh, the mechanism is uh, very uh, uh, very much dependent on the fact that the agents cannot uh, communicate with each other. So this is a non-cooperative uh, uh, game setup and the guarantees are also based on the non-cooperation between the uh, different agents. But if that is not true, so let's say these agents could uh, 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 form collusions or uh, groups and then they collectively decide that we will bid so and so. Uh, then uh, possibly the, 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 the we'll, uh, we'll see in this example that uh, the mechanism is, uh, is not truthful anymore. So they can collude and misrepresent and both be better off. So here is one example how it can be done. So suppose there are three players and the original valuation uh, for for this uh, 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 allocation A is 200, 100 and 0 for these three players and similarly for the outcome B or the uh, allocation B it is 0, 0, 250. So player 3 likes B much more which has no value for the other two players and player 1 and 2 values A much more and it has uh, the player 3 has no value for that. Alright, so you can com compute what is the, the VCG payment if they reveal it uh, truthfully. So, assuming the, uh, the standard setup where uh, these agents cannot uh, communicate with each other, you will find that the payment is going to be 150 and 50. Okay, so now if uh, players 1 and 2, uh, they make a contract that will uh, will bid in this, uh, so uh, we uh, uh, we are going to get A, so in, which is the current outcome anyway, but we'll bid uh, in such a way that our payments go down. So how, how can, can they do it? Uh, player 1 can bid one, uh, 250 and uh, player 2 can bid 150. So they are actually increasing their bids and uh, by doing so, they still keep the same outcome. So in the original uh, game, the outcome was A. And this continues to be A because it, it is only looking at the, uh, the sum of the uh, values in these columns and uh, it picks whichever has uh, uh, whichever uh, allocation gives the maximum uh, sum of the value. That is the efficient allocation. So it was A before, it, uh, um, it continues to be A. But what, uh, what uh, you can observe here is that if you now uh, compute the payment of player 1, so if you remove this agent, uh, so the uh, outcome essentially now changes to B and the sum of the value of the other agents. So that is the that is how the VCG payment is computed. You look at the, you remove a uh, specific agent, look at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, alternative or the valuation, the, uh, the sum of the valuation that is the maximum uh, for the rest of the players. And when the agent is present, you look at what is the sum of the valuation at the uh, at that allocation, at that efficient allocation for the rest of the players. So clearly, uh, when the agent is not present, the sum of the value is 250. When the agent is present, because the player 2 has also uh, uh, reported its uh, value to be 150, uh, so this uh, the sum of the valuation of the other agents uh, becomes 150. So uh, the, the payment for agent uh, 1 becomes 100 instead of 150 which it was paying earlier. Uh, and now if you look at this uh, player 2, uh, it's, uh, if, you, if you remove that agent, uh, the, the, sum of the, the, the sum of the value of the other agents does not change. So there is a tie, it does not matter whether you pick A or B, uh, whatever you, uh, you pick. Uh, you have that uh, uh, value as the sum of the values for all the other players and when the agent is present then also at the efficient allocation the sum of the value of the other players is 250 plus 0 because that's the uh, so uh, player 1 has actually reported 250 so these two things uh, cancel uh, each other out and the, uh, the payment that uh, player 2 is supposed to make is 0 as opposed to uh, 50 which was which it was paying earlier so clearly these two players by uh, misreporting their valuation uh, is actually getting a higher payoff uh, because their payments are going down. They still get the same uh, outcome which is A. So this is a, a clearly uh, not collusion proof. VCG mechanism is clearly not collusion proof. 
The third limitation is that this mechanism is not even frugal. So by frugality, we mean that the, the, the payment that has, that has been collected by the mechanism is not the minimum uh, payment. So it is not trying to sort of optimize the payment that has been, uh, that is being collected by the mechanism designer. Uh, it is a certain, certainly no deficit, though, so the mechanism designer will never run into losses, but the kind of uh, total payment or the surplus that it can extract could be huge. And here is one example how, how it can be huge. So this is essentially a situation which is just the reverse of, uh, of what we have discussed so far. So, uh, so you can think of this as a transportation network like uh, this different supply chains uh, have. Uh, let's say Amazon has or Flipkart has their own sub, uh, networks where uh, they can transport this and each of these edges so when you are transporting so maybe you are going from the source to its uh, to the destination uh, A to F uh, and you might take different paths and each of these paths have a certain amount of cost so all these numbers are essentially cost so you can imagine that these are a negative value so the, the numbers that are shown, it is essentially the negative of that is essentially the value for that uh, age. So if a specific agent, let's say AB, so each of these ages are the agents, players in our case, and they're incurring this cost of three if they are transporting it. Now suppose uh, we want to find the, uh, uh, the that transportation path, which is uh, which minimizes the, the sum of the costs and this is, uh, I mean, you can figure this out. This is the efficient allocation. So one can find the shortest path in this graph from the source to destination. And A, B, E, F in this case happens to be the shortest path. And that, is, that will be the, um, uh, the outcome for the, the, the efficient allocation under VCG mechanism. Now uh, it is time to pay each of these ages some amount of money. Uh, and uh, one can see that here the VCG payment will be uh, negative which means that these agents are getting paid okay so uh, let's uh, calculate what is the, uh, the 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 payment let us focus on only this age so this age here and uh, consider this player which is the a b age so what is the payment the vcg payment that it gets so uh, the first thing is if this agent was not present what is the sum uh, of the uh, of the costs of all the agents uh, so if this uh, uh, agent is not present so then you could not have taken this a b e f path anymore you'll have to go go for some other path in the rest of the network so if this age, age is not present in the rest of the network how you can transport uh, the object from source to destination you will have to take this a c e f path and that gives you a cost of minus two minus three and minus one so that is the, the sum of the value of all the other agents except agent I when uh, agent I is not present. So in this case, agent I is this age AB. So that is that is the first term. And the second term is the uh, sum of the, uh, uh, the, the values of all the agents at the efficient allocation for the other players except agent AB. So that will be minus one here and this minus one here. So uh, that, that is going to be the sum of the valuation. So, so you, you can subtract that out and you get minus 4, which is the payment. So 4 is the amount that is being paid to this age AB. Now, uh, let us consider a situation where this somehow this cost of this age has gone up. So not the cost of uh, agent AB. So in, in fact, the, in that uh, optimal path or the shortest path, no uh, costs have changed. But the costs have changed for some other ages. So for instance, in this case, the AC age, for whatever reason, maybe um, it is getting difficult, uh, they, they don't have that uh, the previous uh, transportation uh, mode anymore. So therefore, their costs might have gone up. So let's say it, uh, the cost has gone up to uh, 8 in this case. Because this VCG mechanism is uh, sort of uh, trying to find uh, the, the VCG payment is essentially trying to uh, find the marginal contribution for each of these players. So now the marginal contribution is significant because if AB was not present, then in order to transport the same thing uh, to the destination, you might have incurred a large amount of cost. And that is essentially asking uh, the mechanism to pay AB uh, much more highly. 
So you can do the math that uh, now the cost of uh, when agent I is not present, uh, agent AB is not present. So this will be the cost, the sum of the costs of all the players except agent I. And when uh, if you're looking at the efficient allocation for the other players, nothing has changed. But now what you can observe is the cost has, so the payment of AB has gone up significantly. And why, uh, why uh, you set the cost to 8? You can arbitrarily increase it. So if a specific age, a different age in the network um, uh, keeps on changing, you can see the payment to a specific agent keeps on changing. It has no relationship with the cost of that particular um, uh, age or that particular uh, uh, shortest path. But yet, it will be it will be asked to pay a very large amount of money, and this is certainly not frugal. So this is a, one of the limitations uh, of uh, of the VCG mechanism. The fourth uh, limitation is something like which is quite counterintuitive. So uh, the intuition uh, in general uh, mechanism design or uh, uh, in any kind of uh, trade. Is that whenever you have more uh, population you might be able to increase your revenue right so uh, if not increase weekly increase so it might remain the same or it might increase but it never should go down but that revenue monotonicity is go going to get violated in the case of VCG mechanism and here is one example so suppose initially we had two agents one and two and there were two uh, allocations alternatives that could have been made and in this case, you can see that uh, player 1 uh, prefers M over F, while pre uh, player 2 uh, prefers F over M. And th these are the numbers that is re representing their, uh, uh, their valuations for each of these objects, uh, alternatives. So uh, when you compute the VCG mechanism, uh, this agent is, is pivotal because uh, if that uh, agent 2 is not present, then the outcome uh, definitely changes to M. But uh, player 1 is not pivotal in this uh, two, two agent case, so it pays 0, while this pays the, the, uh, the, the valuation of the other player. So because these are only two players, this is similar to a uh, second prize auction. Fair enough, so when you have two agents, the auctioneer actually gains 90 amount of money. Now suppose a third agent comes in, and third agent also has a preference for F. And uh, it, it is essentially an identical uh, valuation uh, to, uh, of 2. Now what suddenly happens is that now uh, neither of these 1, 2 or 3 are critical agents or pivotal agents. If you remove 2, now the outcome does not change. If you remove 1, it, it, it will not change. Even if you remove 3, yeah, the outcome won't change. So the outcome will always be F uh, in this case. So therefore, the because there is no pivotal agent anymore, so oh, the, uh, the payment, the VCG payment for each of these players would be equal to zero. So you can see that uh, the revenue monotonicity is violated. Earlier we were uh, getting a valuation, the payment of 90. Now we get a payment of zero. So that is, uh, that is certainly something which is, which is undesirable uh, in, in the context of uh, mechanism design. And finally, this mechanism is also not budget balanced. So we have already seen that it is no deficit, but we have also seen the case that the, uh, the earned revenue could be very large. And the, uh, uh, the problem is that you, you could, could have thought that this excess revenue that we are getting, this could be redistributed among the players and uh, therefore uh, we, we can satisfy uh, uh, the uh, budget balance. Now the trouble is that if you if you design your mechanism in that way, then the players, their incentives or their uh, utilities are already getting uh, changed because they know that at the end of the game, they will get back some amount of money. And now because it, the payment is not VCG anymore, you are changing the payment by uh, while giving back your uh, redistributed money, they might misreport and they might get, get a better outcome, better utility. So the, uh, in order to make this budget balance, what you are losing is strategy proofness. And that is certainly a much more uh, primary property that we, we want. Uh, you can think of a, uh, a different and a simple mechanism where you are partitioning these agents into two classes. So let's say if there are 10 agents, I make uh, two partitions of uh, five and five each. 
run a VCG mechanism on each of these subclasses and whichever revenue is generated, we give it to the other class. So equally distribute for the other five agents and vice versa. So uh, the revenue that you are getting generated in the second class, that will be distributed equally to all the agents in class one. But uh, now what we are compromising, maybe you, you can already begin to see this. This is a compromise to the efficiency because now the uh, allocation that you are going to do First of all, it, it does not apply to all kind of uh, setups. So for instance, if you are um, uh, talking about one single decision, let's say building a bridge or building a, uh, building a park, those kind of decisions, public uh, good decisions, then uh, you cannot do it because uh, population might like it differently than, the, uh, than, the different, uh, uh, than a different class. So you cannot really take such kind of a decision. But um, uh, for certain kind of um, uh, situations, so for instance, if you are just uh, allocating uh, uh, objects, uh, so they, they only have uh, objects to be allocated, so then we can partition the objects as well and then uh, do this mechanism. But still, uh, what you could have done uh, by uh, looking at the, the whole population together would have been efficient and by partitioning it into groups, you are already losing the efficiency uh, condition. So you are not uh, allocating the objects in the most efficient way. So of course, there is this problem, uh, the surplus. Um, so this surplus has to be uh, taken away. So the mechanism cannot redistribute it in any way. Um, of course, there are certain classes of mechanisms which does this re redistribution as we discussed in this case and they try to give certain guarantees under certain special conditions but in general, efficiency and budget balance is not possible to get satisfied. This is a uh, result that we'll uh, discuss much later in the course. Uh, so this uh, surplus which is to be taken away or destroyed is also known in the literature as money burning. So you are taking this money and you are as if you are burning it off. So you can uh, look at this trade-off between money burning and efficiency in, in a, a little uh, older work of mine, if you are interested. So this is um, about the efficiency and budget balance, the precise two, um, uh, two properties that we are uh, talking about in the general quasi-linear domains. But why did we discuss all these limitations? Just to give you a feeling that um, uh, uh, under which situations you can more effectively use VCG mechanism. VCG comes with lots of uh, positive properties and there are certain uh, limitations as well. So by knowing the limitations you can be using, you should, uh, you are actually uh, looking at both sides of, of this mechanism. Uh, so you can be able to use it much more effectively.